with Gor Semelango, who is a distinguished coach at Kenyatta University, as well as a successful businessman who will be helping us understand some of the key issues affecting young people when it yes. comes to funding businesses. Thank you for coming on studio Thank this afternoon. Thank you very much. He's actually a distinguished mentor at the Chandari Incubation Center at the Kenyatta University. Thanks and for that correction. But I, I'm, I'm happy about the, the report I've just read, uh, but we've just watched on television. Because once we sort out also the skills gap, which I think the government is doing to be able to sort out the youth polytechnics, and because you have a lot of our young people who have C plus and they do not want to join the technical institutions, and they, they are very good machines that, are, that I think the government has been able to bring into those institutions, the lathe machines, mm -hmm. so that we can be able to marry uh, the, t the technology and also the skills, we, we, we close the skills gap. Mm -hmm. The mentorship program, I think, is very critical. Yeah. That we have as many young people as possible getting to, to, to understand how to do business and not wait for employment. I know at some point you did work at the Youth Enterprise Development Fund as the chairman. Yes. Um, you actually spearheading campaigns when it comes to accessing money to young people. Yes. One of the biggest challenges for young entrepreneurs is access to capital. Of yes. course, most people have brilliant ideas that they can use to start a business. Oh, yes. But the biggest challenge is capital. How do we solve this unending problem? Okay. Apart from government initiatives, which I think is very good, there, there is that bit of uh, providing the, the, the money in terms of loans. And, and then the other bit is um, offering 30% uh, tender to young people and women. <clears throat> which is very critical. I but think I the understand gap, this 30% yes. never really worked as people had expected. Yeah, yes, I mean, there are teething problems. You know, government has good intention always, but it also depends on, on, on in terms of who are going to implement the projects. But I think it's a good initiative. I think there may be teething problems, and it is always young people must take up the initiative to look for these standards. And if there are challenges, they must be able to make enough noise for those who are in charge to understand that there are challenges. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are several sources of funding apart from the government initiatives. Which are these uh, sources? There are several. We start with the, what it's uh, economists or, 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 or people in business commonly refer as uh, uh, bootstrappings. Mm -hmm. Bootstrapping is uh, basically starting a business with very little capital or no capital. Mm -hmm. For instance, you just uh, wake up one day and you decide that you want to do business. And I always tell uh, uh, small business owners or young people who want to start business that as long as you have the commitment and the drive to start a business, mm -hmm. you will always do it. Mm -hmm. But if you want to find excuses, there are always excuses. And lack of capital is a very reasonable excuse to give. Mm -hmm. But you can start many businesses, including now in social media. Yeah. You can start up any business, even uh, I mean, a website. running errands or mm -hmm. a website mm -hmm. with no capital or very little capital. That's what is called bootstrappings. Mm -hmm. And what it helps you do is that you start small and you grow slowly mm -hmm. without uh, basically going uh, to seek any funding from anywhere else. The other one is angel investors. Mm -hmm. They are those who are business owners and they would like to do mentorship programs and they would like to help those who want to come up with the small businesses. And they would be able to give you a check, but before they do that, they will be able to do a research to, to just find out whether your how idea easy, is working. How easy is it, um, Mr. Semelango, yes. for young people to access these angel investors? Because they sort of operate in a formal kind of network. network. Oh, where yes. they, they have incubation centers. How do young people get to access them? What you, needs to be done? You must have, in this era of uh, internet, you can always Google and find who are, the, who are the people who are willing to put money in new ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I'm sure you are aware banks are not very keen on you know, funding uh, startups. Because I mean, the banks say these are high risk? They are high risk, actually. Mm -hmm. And I think that was why the, there was government intervention mm -hmm. to ensure that there are people who are willing, there is some money available for those who want to start up businesses. Mm -hmm. But there are people also, the angel investors, people who through those networks we are talking about, who are willing to put in money in different ideas mm -hmm. that are workable. And they'll always try to find out whether you committed to that, whether you'll be able to listen to them, mm -hmm. uh, because they want to be part of it, and they can also offer you know, advice. 
basically they are looking at about 20 to 25 uh, percent return mm -hmm. on their investment not really much because basically it's like helping some even give grants there are some NGOs. If you look at Africa, there are about over 50, uh, 50 organizations mm -hmm. and institutions that uh, I mean, uh, fund uh, businesses across Africa. But uh, then, apart from the NGO investors who can put in money and expect about 2025, 20, there are also other uh, uh, type of uh, funding sources that you can get. There is um, the venture capitalist. Mm -hmm. This is basically they want a business that is taking off you're already getting orders and there's some income coming in yeah and these are people who want return on investment like in the next four to five years or three to five years they, mm -hmm. are, they are able to recoup their investment and then walk out of the business mostly they will be able to come in and and, and put in managers and, and and be involved in the management of business mm -hmm. that particular venture because they want to be sure that the risk it's minimized and they're able to invest their money and then recoup their money and, and get out of your business. And so you must be able to have in your business plan a very clear uh, exit plan yeah. for the investor, for the venture capital investor. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> and the other one is, is the, actually the commercial banks. Mm -hmm. I think I watched uh, news, uh, our, uh, the, the central bank uh, uh, boss it's talking about trying to bring down the interest rate. I think mm -hmm. it was uh, in part of the ju Jubilee administration yeah. desire to bring it to a single digit mm -hmm. so that it would be easy for people to do business. Yeah. And, and, and like, I <coughs> like you know, small businesses is the engine of growth. Mm -hmm. If you are able to facilitate the small enterprises, then we'll be able to have a very vibrant economy because you'll have so many young people Instead of idling or women and youth will be able to get involved in income generating activities. Do you so think um, we've seen several funds being started? We yes. have Weso Fund, yes. we have Women Enterprise Development Fund, yes. Youth Enterprise <coughs> Development Fund. Yes. Have they been effective when it comes to dispersing funds to young people to get loans that they can quickly start their businesses? Because there's yes. been that level of bureaucracy. There's been level, I think, at, at the point when the president came into office, up here, I think he was very concerned about the numerous groupings, all these government initiatives. So I think there was a suggestion that all these uh, organizations should be merged into a Biashara fund. Mm -hmm. Then it will be like a one-stop shop for all the small enterprises that need to be funded, both for youth and women. I think they've not been very effective, basically because... Um, of the bureaucratic nature, the red tape bureaucracy, you know, in government. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think efforts have been made, I mean, and several attempts to be able to ease, to make it easier for young people and women to be able to access. Mm -hmm. So I think what needs to be done is to, uh, I think basically is to, to understand what are the needs of those young people. Correct. Because when you talk about 30% trend, I think the ideal thing should have been uh, to, to to, they don't need to miss the money mm -hmm. because it is the government giving the tender and it is government giving the money. Yeah. So they should have, you know, in, uh, there is invoice discounting and LPO financing system that should have been created to allow women and youth to be able to access that money without any challenges. But mm -hmm. I think there have been a few challenges. Mm -hmm. Some basically uh, uh, riddled in corruption and all that. Yeah. But uh, far and large, I think uh, something is being done and I think mm -hmm. everything should be fine. Finally, Mr. Semilango, yes. the other big issue that um, young people are facing is there's, that, there's no mentor. You, yes. You've gotten this money, yes. let's say a million shillings. Yes. You have this great plan yes. and you start your business. Yes. There's no one to work with you in terms of saying, okay, You've made profits. Yes. What do you do with or the do profits? <laughs> do Should you plow I, it back? Do I plow it back? Do I go to Mombasa on holiday? I mean, young people are living a flashy life. You're seeing yes, them yes. buying sporty cars. They want yes. to dress up in expensive suits and yeah. expensive watches like what you <laughs> have. <laughs> you know, the, what young people should understand is everybody who has made it big has made certain sacrifices. Mm -hmm. When you do business, you should be able to plow back the profits so that the business can grow. Uh, but uh, uh, mentorship is very critical, and I'm happy uh, uh, I see the CS, um, um, Eden. Eden, has talked about mentorship. And many universities now are doing mentorship programs. 
um, it's at Strathmore. I think I've talked once I was invited. There is a, the, the one I am in as a distinguished mentor at Kenyatta University. They have an incubation center where they incubate, you know, young, young Kenyans who come up with uh, new ideas and technology mm -hmm. and, and try to get them seed capital to, to start business. So we need a pool of young people and mentors who are able to mentor these young people. And also it is critical as an individual, as a young person mm -hmm. or a small business owner that you look for, uh, for somebody who can be able to mentor you uh, when you're doing business because then you need to learn the ropes. It is very critical because then you avoid other things that uh, may crop up. Mistakes. Other Mistakes, mistake. yeah. For example, I've, had, uh, invo I've been involved in several businesses, mm -hmm. part of which uh, like a taxi business which, I, which ran down. Mm -hmm. So therefore, if you want to ta start a taxi business, if you talk to me, then I will be able to, <laughs> to tell you what not to do. The do's and the don'ts. The do's and the don'ts. So it's Fantastic. very critical to, to identify a mentor. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I have several people I mentor. So it's very critical to identify. I also get mentorship from others. Mm -hmm. I happen to sit with the Dr. Manu Chandaria himself, the Dr. Chris Kirubi, um, SK Macharia at, at the, dist at the K K K KU mm -hmm. Incubation Center. So you look up to them also. You, I mean, if you share with them, then you are able to know what not to do. Because they say a wise person <laughs> learns from other people's mistake. mistakes. That's a good place to end it. Yes. Many thanks. Thank you. Always a pleasure speaking to pleasure. you, Gorse Melang.